All right, welcome to the Clog Builder 2.0 Master Classes. Yes, this is the Clog Framework Tutorial 1. We're going to be going through the tutorials that are in Clog. There are 35 such tutorials. They have to do with the Clog's framework itself. They're not really about the builder, but they are how the builder is built, and they're also how you build applications using the builder. We'll do more specific demonstrations about the builder and how to build applications as we go further on, meaning using the graphical parts of the builder. Right now we're using the builder pretty much the way somebody would use Emacs or anything else to be able to write a software and run it. And today's class is an important class, very dear to my heart. This is a class that is going to discuss the idea that, well, it's alive. The fact of the matter is, is that you are dealing with the first artificial intelligence system as far as I'm concerned where you basically have a discussion with your Lisp image. The discussion that you have is live and living. And essentially, we'll talk about how you make use of that to really be able to write software at lightning speed. And this is really what makes the difference between, well, common Lisp and almost everything else that's out there. Uh, there are certain examples, of course, of other versions that exist that, that, are, that are, well, they, they come somewhat comparable. Smalltalk probably being the closest to common Lisp as far as being able to do this. And of course, this clog that we've put together here, uh, well, let's sort of bring this closer to small talk in terms of the graphic abilities, maybe actually even beyond in some ways. But of course, we'll get to that and talk about that later. And of course, as clog develops, there'll be a lot more to go. So we're going to go through six things. We're gonna load up tutorial one. We're gonna load up the source for tutorial one. We're gonna talk about how clog communicates with the page. So at least you have a little bit of an idea of how that works. Uh, and then we're gonna demo the val buttons and what they do. And then we're going to talk about the difference between restarting an application versus just changing the image, because that's really the key of what we want to get across is this idea that live images and interacting with a live system is, is the most effective, most powerful, fastest way to be able to develop software. And then, of course, the difference between transferring a function and transferring, well, a symbol that points to a function. And we'll talk about that. Again, this is not a class on comp. On, on common list itself, although I'll try and point out some things as we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and load up tutorial one. And so let's first go open up a REPL. Uh, let's go run tutorial one. Okay, now this tutorial is very simple. It only handles one thing, and that's clicking that text. Okay, so let's go back to our builder. Let's go ahead and grab the source for that. So let's copy. And Builder, open up a source editor, load. By the time you use this, you may have uh, uh, other versions of how to get to the how to get to the uh, the framework tutorials, but uh, that's uh, that we'll deal with in the future. But for right now, that's just, that's the way you'll always be able to get to it, which is you just file open and grab the source from the actual REPL. Okay, so. This is a, a very, very straightforward, very, very simple tutorial that does one thing, and that is it's going to display the hello world. In this case, uh, it looks like HTML because it is HTML. It happens to be that Clog has many different ways of being able to uh, present things on the screen. Most of Clog is written more like a GUI framework and not like something that you may be used to from HTML and JavaScript. Well, it isn't an HTML and JavaScript. It's actually all well, except for the underlying guts of it, though all of it essentially is in common Lisp. And my intention was to create a GUI framework that is easy to use for anyone, no matter where you're coming from. It's basically Visual Basic, Delphi. It's the old school, simple, really straightforward, easy to use, but actually leaves open the ability to really do just about anything, including many wondrous things that we'll talk about. And you're not limited by the GUI framework that Clog presents the underlying method by which you can get to anything on a web page is still there no matter what you decide to use as your front end. Uh, and we'll talk about those things in later tutorials. There are 35 of them. That doesn't necessarily mean 35 videos, but we will be discussing them in the upcoming future. Now, going back to our specific tutorial, tutorial one, right? Uh, so again, every uh, every particular project that we're going to use, well, every tutorial we're going to use is pretty much going to start the same way, which is to find a package, right? In this case, each, each one of the tutorials has a separate package. And we're going to tell it that we're going to use common Lisp and we're going to use clog. That happens to be that there are 
some later tutorials that we used what's called Cloud GUI and Cloud Web, and we'll talk about those when we get to them. Um, but anyways, that's the way it works. And export, this is essentially how the particular product that we're doing is going to present itself to the outside world. This is an export. This gives us our interface into our, the world of our particular program, an interface into our package, which is the start tutorial. Again, don't worry about it if you don't understand everything. I, again, I suggest you look at the learn.nd page on the GitHub uh, you know, clog page, and there you'll, like I said, plenty of information about common lisp itself. Right, we go ahead and say that this file and everything that's going to be read into the list image. Remember, we're having a conversation with the list image. Now, in this particular case, we have a file, but this could have been typed in at the REPL. This can come in many different fashions into your system, but for the most part, this is the way it works. So you'd say where you actually want the conversation to take place. We're going to take place in this package, clog 21. Now, we have two functions here. The first function, start tutorial. That was the one I said that had an interface to the world. Right, and basically a second one called on new window. Again, these are arbitrary names. I could have named them anything. I export the one, that's why we use that the same name as I use for the exported one. And the the actual handler, this actually handles a brand new page being opened up into our clogverse. Okay. So let's go basically to the to the, the the interface, right? So this is a function called start tutorial with an optional doc string. That's a nice little text here. We're not gonna do this in every tutorial, but we'll talk a little bit on the first one. Uh, and really what happens is, is this is just something for our reference, right? Okay, and the, the function basically start tutorial, and we go ahead and we initialize the clock system, and we tell it what function is going to handle the new page. Okay, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, a little bit more of the details that are here. Now, again, you'll look up the tutorial itself, you read through all the details that are here, and then what we're going to do after we've initialized Clog with the function that will handle access to the page, then we go ahead and we move to the open browser, which opens up a browser, and that actually runs a little application, right? And boom, there we go. Okay, now, the magic, of course, of Clog is in the on new window and all the future additional functions and classes and everything else you decide to put into building yourself a grand beautiful system with clog that all happens here so we go ahead and we set the title of the document to say tutorial 01 and we go ahead and here's where we actually define an element hello element that element is going to uh, be created using a function called create child this is actually not one we use very often but I chose to use this particular function because it's just a very simple way of creating any HTML on the page. In this case, we use an H1, uh, you know, set of set of tags with hello world and the words click me. Of course, the beauty of Clog is that, of course, it being able to put HTML up on a page. There are tons and tons of frameworks that do that. The real key to Clog is in this little beauty here, set on click. Essentially, I'm able to take any, any any sort of uh, any one of the elements on a single page and I can attach to it I can attach to it uh, L, you know basically functions that do things and I write them in common Lisp and they control what we do so it happens to be there are ways to do common you know, all kinds of custom you know events and controls but that's not with the events and, the, and set events and so forth but what we're gonna do here with this handler is a very simple set on click again if we go through the source code, there's, there's a manual, of course, available here, Clog Manual, that'll give you all the goodies about everything inside, all the things that are here, and there's tons and tons of stuff. And of course, if you know HTML and JavaScript, you do open up an entire world, even more of what can be done. Um, but again, you gotta think differently. Don't walk into Clog thinking you're going to be a, a familiar web framework. Don't look at it as a web framework. Look at this as, uh, as as uh, as TK, look at this as GTK, look at this as QT, look at this even even not exactly quite a little more complex, but look at this look at it in terms of 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 Win sixty four and Win thirty two, right? Look at this in terms of a GUI framework, and you're going to be very comfortable, very happy, and you're going to love what this brings to the table. Um, if now if you are a web programmer, there's all kinds of things you'll also gain by taking the knowledge you have and then applying Clog with it. But we're not going to talk about that anymore. This is where we got to. So again, same sort of thing, set on click. We go ahead, we give the element, and then basically we say our function. Our function basically is going to be uh, to set the color, the hello element, to green. And that's exactly what we do. 
and boom, there, of course, you clicked on it and go ahead. Now, okay, that's about what we're going to do. This tutorial, that's really pretty much what this program does. You're really going to have to read through the text that's there, you know, play with it, try it, try different things. Again, this the purpose of the tutorial is to be interactive. I'm giving you a video because I'm going to explain some things like I'm about to do now that are somewhat outside of what's actually within that tutorial page or that I think that are, need to be highlighted and you need to understand well in order that you basically can, can become a clogger. That you can take Common Lisp to the next level for web programming with clog. Um, so again, so like I said, the simple idea that you're going to be putting elements on the page or you can attach to elements that already exist on a page. We'll see them in the future. And then essentially you can just attach anything on that page. You can attach anything you want with a handler, right? These type of functions that will be able to be able to then actively alive work with what's on the page. Now, by the way, this is important to understand. This page, Hello World, it's not a static page like your average HTML file. This page is actually alive and it is connected back to the web server. Now, at first you're saying, oh my, that, that, uh, isn't that going to be some resource hungry and all, all sorts of things? Well, I got news for you. Since about 20 years ago, every web page everywhere is actually connected back with a live connection that remains open for the most part for the session that you have with a particular server. So it's not like it used to be anyways, like I said, for a good 20 years where you're serving static pages. Almost all web, web access that you do keeps you with a live connection. Now, our live connection is a little bit different in that we not only uh, like sort of remain open just to pass back and forth HTML, we actually use WebSockets, an HTML5 component that allows a person to pass information back and forth in this case, our, to our server, which again, which is your, your, your application, and to the client, which is the actual web page itself. And the information goes back and forth on a WebSocket. So when I go ahead and I click, then I actually pass a message back to Clog, or in this case, your application, which then runs our particular uh, handler. Our handler says, set the color to green, which sends a message back to the web page and says, set this to green. So there is some back and forth between the client and the server here, and that's what lets all that magic happen. And that's important to understand, uh, but again, we'll, we'll, for right now, the best way to really just put in your head is just imagine, again, that this is a GUI frame, you know, framework. Because really, in, in, in fact, look, there's a reality, and that is the majority of new applications coming out are being programmed. The front end is being done in HTML. They're not being done in these toolkits. So this allows us to place us behind that and make use of it and control it uh, using Common Lisp and therefore have the greatest, most powerful language in the world to be able to get the most out of today's tech and actually future tech because anything new comes out, it always comes out first for the web anyways. So boom, we gotta we just go ahead and make a couple of uh, clicks and a couple of lines of code and boom, we're gonna hook into any piece of anything that hooks up to a browser in the future. So now it's time to get started with the really fun stuff. What makes Lisp Lisp? Well, common Lisp. Okay, here's the thing, right? We have in front of us an application and the concept of running an application in the normal fashion of writing a program in C or in C++ or any language for that matter. And you write it, you compile it, you run it. So in a sense, we've sort of just done that. Now, what we're going to do now is see how we can actually work live with an application. So, well, first of all, uh, let's say, for example, so we can follow the old path. Okay, green. Let's go back here. Let's say we want it to be red, right? Okay, and we can go ahead and save that file. And let's go ahead to our REPL. And let's say, okay, go ahead and run tutorial. Now, it happens to be this run tutorial program is actually another program that I wrote that basically loads the loads the tutorial and runs it, right? So compiles it, runs it. So we do that, we're gonna have exactly the same thing, except this time it's gonna be red instead of green, right? That, that would be the same as it would be in any language, right? Um, and in fact, uh, actually let's do this just one more time, of course, of course I can run it, I can uh, reset it, right? Same sort of thing, each time will be the same thing. Okay, so let's go back to our application. now. now if I would change this to green, right, back to green, right, and I saved it, uh, if I didn't compile it, nothing would happen, right? 
Well, uh, let's go ahead and actually recompile this function. Okay, oh, so we evaluate the form, sorry. Okay, so we went ahead and we evaluated the form. We had a conversation with our Lisp image and we said, hey buddy, on new window does this now. And we go ahead back here and we reset the page and oh, it's still red. Well, okay, let, let's talk about this. This is important. Now it happens to be that all the future tutorials are already gonna be set up for this. This first one is not, and th this is there's a reason, and that's so we can talk about this. And that is there's an idea of a function, right, which is the compiled value of function, which is what this does. This essentially passes the compiled function to initialize and says that once we start our application and we initial we're using our start tutorial function, right, and then we initialize it and we pass the function that's going to be used, we pass the compiled version of that function, right, to initialize. So no matter what we change or even how many times we recompile this particular function, the, the, the problem is it gets caught in that the actual initialize clog itself when it's connecting you to the page is connecting you to a previously compiled piece of code. So no matter what I do, it's not going to make a difference. So to, to change that, right, we go ahead and let's go ahead here. All right, let's save this file again. Okay, now what I've done is I removed that pound that was here, right? So that pound tick, what that does is that says pass the compile value. When I remove the pound, what I've done now is I'm saying I want to pass to initialize the symbol on new window. Now, anytime I want to get the value of the function, the currently compiled version, the, the version that my Lisp image is using, then what I do is I say, look at the symbol and see what it's pointing to. So now I've gone ahead and I've sent, initialized the on new symbol that basically point new world window symbol which now points to this function whichever the latest compiled version of it is right so now let's go ahead let's go ahead and let's do let's uh, let's evaluate this all right so we've we've re, we've put, we basically have recompiled start tutorial we recompiled now on new window right so the file is here and actually let's do this let's go ahead and select this piece here and let's go here and let's do eval selection, okay? Uh, and of course, that's red, but didn't it say green here? Hmm, so we did we compile that, let's see here. Compile that now, let's reset again, and it's red. Oh, so what's going on over here? What's going on here is exactly what I just said before. Start tutorial, it's still the initialize that was there before, when we ran the tutorial, what we ran before is that we had actually fed the Lisp image start tutorial, but the other start, start tutorial is what's in memory. I know this gets a little bit confusing, and I made this mistake. Well, because I made the mistake, and I was also doing this on purpose that you see how that works. So let's go back and let's rerun the program from scratch with the one we have saved in on the on the hard drive, but that's already set up now for the future. Because now we have a start tutorial, which, by the way, is fixed in memory. That's what the actual uh, program that ran and the initialize that ran and everything that's there all ran basically now as the new program. And we initialized clog this time, though, with the on new window symbol and not the function. So the cool thing about that, of course, and this is now this is what's there right now, is I can go ahead and I can make a change here, right? Let's say to red. And I evaluate that form. I go back here, I reset, and boom, it's red. Okay, so that's basically what's going on. So eval all will evaluate everything on the page. The problem is, is again, what's sitting in the image. So before start tutorial was loaded off the drive, and that remained in the image. Even when we, when we went ahead and we recompiled it, there's still the, 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 the code start tutorial itself was never rerun. Now, I could have actually gone to the REPL, and I'll actually show you this, right? Just to understand, and hopefully this all comes out. If you play with this enough, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about, right? So I've, I've now introduced, right, the start tutorial version that fixes 
right? This a compiled version, whatever the currently compiled version of Anduinu is, into initialized for Claude. So let's go back to our REPL for a second, right? And I want to go ahead here, and let's say I want to go ahead, and let's say, um, well, first of all, we actually have to make sure that we are in the correct package when we're talking, right? Because we're going to talk directly to the image about our package. So let's, let's go ahead and copy that. Let's go to our REPL, right? And we will go ahead and say start tutorial, right? So that actually runs now the version that's in memory. That version in memory has the version of on new window that's red. Now we go back to our application, okay? So again, so this is what's red. We went ahead and we compiled and we ran in this image the on new window with the pound, which meant to say this is fixed. So if I go ahead now and I say green, right? And I recompile this particular function and I reset this, it's still going to be red, right? So the only way basically, we have to go back here again. Let's get rid of this. Again, where we fixed in memory that particular piece. Now I can go back to my REPL again and say, okay, I want you to run the new version of Start, of, of start Tutorial. And now basically I can click and it's green. But not just that. I can now go back to our code again, right? And I can say, okay, let's put orange. And say evaluate the form, reset our page again, and it's orange. Now again, you might want to go through that a couple times and just understand what's going on. I'm going to try and now repeat it outward, out, outwardly so you understand what's happening, right? A val form, a val select, and a val all. They essentially are say evaluate this and talk to, right? Pass this to my Lisp image. Now the Lisp image itself, right? He says is is a is a piece of code like everything else. So start tutorial, I says the start for my function, the start of my application. That piece of code tells Clog what, what function should be used, right? So starting the tutorial, right, that's going to set up how we initialize it. Do we initialize it with a function or do we initialize it with a symbol? If we initialize it with a function, then the actual function on new window, right, he says, the way, however it's compiled, at the time this is run, that's the one that sticks there and doesn't change no matter what we do. So to get that really cool, quick, dynamic type of activity, we have to make sure that we're passing the symbol that says whatever the latest version is, that's what we want to be used. So we go ahead and so we recompile start tutorial. We go ahead and we rerun, right? So we compile everything. We go ahead and we make sure that we rerun the actual version that we want. Right? So this way we know that we're basically working with a version that we want that has been set up from the very beginning to essentially just pass the symbol to initialize. So this way every time a page hits the server, it says, hey, get whatever on new window is. On new window is. So on new window says orange. Well, let's go ahead and let's say yellow. Right? And again, let's go ahead and evaluate the form. Again, I haven't started. By the way, I haven't touched the hard drive. I haven't saved any of this. Right? So we go again, now it's yellow, right? and whatever we want to do, whatever changes we make at this point are all going to be live. They're all going to be allow us to make very quick changes, right? Allow us to do quite a bit. Um, okay, so again, the, 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 this, this particular idea of how this works takes a little bit of playing with, takes, to, you know, play with what we've, what we've talked about right now, and you'll see how this works. And again, you may not yet appreciate this idea that everything is alive and that you can be having changes going on all the time with a fully running program, but that's a reality, right? So I give an example, right? Let's say, let's say I look at our preferences file here, right? And let's say we go ahead and we want to change the, um, the actual pro the actual version here. Let's see here. So terminal, I want to use a different, version again it's not, it's not about clog it's about i want to show you something we can do like literally with a fully live program right and i say i want to change the editor theme from the iplastic 
to terminal. Actually, even though this is a, a comment here with double quotes and everything, but I'm going to say I want to select a piece and I say evaluate selection. Well, you know what happens now? <laughs> what happens now is that every single new version that I open up, in fact, let's go ahead here just to show what's going on. Let's open it up in a new tab, for example. And <laughs> there you go. Our code now is using a brand new and a, 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 you know, a different version of our of our of our preference because we've reset it. So I've actually, mod, I've actually done something completely different in a living program and do whatever I want. Now again, it, it's it, this may seem like a dull type of example, but you'll notice and you'll see the sorts of things we're working with. It's you're working with a live program. I can literally be playing with every element that's on the screen while it's here and live and ready and keep changing it and changing it, playing with it, making sure, of course, to well, save or experiment and what, what I'm doing. And what I have is a, is a live system. It's both live within, within, a, within a command line REPL, right? It's a live basically uh, at any point anywhere in the system, being able to copy and, and evaluate the selection or evaluate the, a whole form, a whole piece of information. If it evaluate form, I would have a quote, you know, that this is like actually a comment. So it works out of value selection. About all, I'll take the whole file, load the whole file in, actually go do that. I loaded, reloaded the entire file. And what ended up happening? Well, now basically what I've got from start to finish is I just put everything back to where it was. So, for example, if I go back to our file here, yeah, boom, it goes back to our uh, other version. Anyways, like you said, again, I, I could have blown you, blown, blown this away, doing something even cooler. But the point is, look at what we just did. Go over it a couple of times. Feel what makes a difference. What's compiled? What's not compiled? What we've passed in the the, the actual compiled function versus passing in a symbol that points to a function. And this becomes a theme which is going to run through much of your applications, whether you're using Clog or not. All right, so let's see. We do have all of our uh, all of our, uh, our points. Load tutorial one. Load the source. Talk about cloud communicates with the page. Demo the eval buttons. Difference between restarting a, an app versus changing the image, and of course the difference between pound tick and tick, which basically gives us the difference between a compiled function, right, versus a symbol uh, that we could pass around. Okay, so like I said, th these were the key points I wanted to bring out as far as the first tutorial on Clog. 